Hello! I hope you are enjoying this absolutely beautiful day. The sun is shining here in Northeast Indiana and I could not be more excited. Um, so my name is Lindy and if you're watching this video, I just want to tell you how grateful I am that you have taken the time to sit with me and talk. Um, let me talk about something that has really been heavy on my heart. Um, I am an online health and fitness coach. Um, I've been a coach over three years now. I help women get into a workout program and nutrition program that is suitable to their needs and I help other coaches build their own online fitness business. Um, just a little backstory about me. I was really active as a kid. I was a competitive dancer for 10 years, traveling all around the country. I was always super duper active. Um, I accepted Jesus as my savior when I was 14. Went to a private Christian college where I was sexually assaulted at the age of 19. I was drunk at a party and basically um, my roommate, when I came home and told her, told me it was my fault because I'd been drinking. So I suppressed that memory um, for a really, really long time. And it wasn't until I became a coach and started uh, pouring into personal development that this memory and the senses and the smells really started to come back to me. And as coaches, um, our network, one of the daily vital behaviors that our CEO has bred and uh, into us is personal development, spending time reading a book that is going to make you better in whatever season of life you're going through. So through my coaching business, I found my way um, leading back to God. And a friend had invited me to church. Um, I had left the church for 15 years, drinking, partying, sleeping around, not understanding really why I had this um, need to um, seek attention. I had a weird relationship with my dad growing up. He was an alcoholic and a drug addict and um, I really struggled with that so I blamed my daddy issues. Um, but it wasn't until coaching and personal development that um, I really realized that it was my sexual assault that um, led me down this path. And it wasn't until coaching that I could recognize through personal development, through exercise, through sitting prayerfully every morning and, and spending time with God um, that I really understood where my struggles were coming from. And since then, um, I read a book by Beth Moore called Breaking Free. And that was pretty soon after my coaching career started in 2017. And um, it's been a path of healing ever since then. And I know that so many women struggle with their past, their trauma, things that they're dealing with. Um, I recently had to have a hysterectomy. Um, I'm, um, I'll be 38 in June. I am single. Um, I don't have any children except my a uh, little four-legged friend who is sitting here panting at me as I record this video. Um, and so I feel like the last two years, as I've grown closer to God, my struggles have become greater. Um, my 18-year-old brother got shot, stuck between a domestic violence, <clears throat> domestic violence situation between his parents. He's okay. He's 20. My dad got sober. He got saved. Um, we've been on a path of reconciliation, and in this time, um, befriending my pastor and his wife and just really pouring into the personal development aspect of coaching have I really been able to stretch myself to a place um, where I feel like I can share where I need to share where I have to tell people about one the message of Jesus and two how healing um, leads us to that next stage in our life and I was really, I was in the shower this morning and I finished a really hard workout and I was two pounds heavier on the scale this morning than I was a week ago and I was super frustrated and super down on myself and you know, God just kind of said to me while I was taking a shower, you know what, it'll all be okay. Stop stressing about the things that don't matter. It will all be okay. Um, and I... It always takes on a new meaning and when I tell people that you know I I have conversations with God sometimes he answers sometimes he doesn't if you are a believer in and you've had those kinds of moments you know what I'm talking about um, if you don't then you probably think I'm insane and that's okay that you're probably not that too far off anyway um, but anyway I was thinking this morning about um, my team of coaches that I've been working with we're starting a confidence push today because as a woman in this social media era, um, dealing with the COVID situation that we've been in, trying to build a business, 
um, going through all of the things emotionally, financially, you know, the struggles that we have had over the past couple of months, um, you know, it's we're just in a different time in our lives and we have to choose to push through. Um, I had to choose to give my situation with my brother to God. I had to give, choose to give my situation um, of a breakup I had last year to God. I had to give my hysterectomy to God. And the more that I relinquish control as a complete and total control freak, um, the more he continues to bless my life. And I really struggled with this in my business um, the past couple of years of wanting to be a seven figure a year earner because in our network, um, I'm part of a multi-level marketing company. And so in our network, we talk about our income is based on the lives that we affect. So in that sense, yes, I want to be a seven-figure earner. Um, I don't. I won't idolize money. I, I. Jesus is the top priority of my heart, and he and I have that conversation every day. But I want to be a million-dollar-a-year earner. I want to bless the shit out of the people that bless me every single day. Um, local radio stations, our local youth, yada yada yada. And over the past two years, especially last year, I was in medical menopause. I was on a Lupron shop shot every 28 days I was completely exhausted fibroids endometriosis if you struggle with um, chronic illness you know what um, all that is about and um, it was just a really struggle a time of struggle in my life and I had to constantly every day give that to God sometimes I could give it to him and leave it alone sometimes I had to give it to him 10 times a minute um, and I guess my message today is that life is hard I want you to take a second to think about the things that you do on, on a daily basis that are hard. Maybe it's you're in a relationship that you struggle with. Um, maybe it's in a job that you don't feel purpose. Maybe it's um, a child who is a brat or dealing with medical issues or um, a teenager who is you know, a teenager doing all the things that we do as teenagers. Um, maybe you're in an abusive relationship. Maybe you have um, an estranged relationship with a parent or a sibling, or maybe someone has walked out of your life that you thought would always be there. Maybe you're struggling with finances. Maybe you're struggling with your weight. Maybe you're struggling with porn or an affair. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with. Every day, um, we do hard things. And I got a message on Facebook this morning, and it just it made me think, we all want things in our life. We want a job that we love. We want a relationship that we love. We love. We want a child that is gonna listen to us and understand that as parents, we know what we're talking about because we've been there. You do hard things every day. We, we have to think about the things that we want and the things that we're willing to do. So many times, um, you know, I have conversations with ladies who, and I can relate to this because I was there, um, they want to do the workouts, they want to lose weight, they want to get healthy, but they're not willing to put in the work. They're not willing to um, watch their portions or you know, believe in a nutrition plan. They're not willing to believe in themselves. And we can want all the things in life. We can want, want, want. But if we're not willing to put in the work, how are we ever going to have that job that we feel passionate about? That relationship that we strive for? that relationship with our child who may be a struggle or a friendship. Life is work, life is hard. We do it every day. You do hard things every single day. You maybe um, put food on the table when you don't have the means to put food on the table, but you make it happen. Maybe you, um, neighborhood watch, Lilo. Maybe you um, have to humbly or swallow your pride and ask someone to help you out with covering a bill right now. Um, whatever that thing is that, that you struggle with, um, you make a way for that to happen. You find a way. You find a way to put food on the table for your kids. You find a way to work a job and smile and make it through the day. You do hard things every day. So I want you to think about the things that you really want in life. If money and time were not an issue, what would your life look like? What would your family look like? What would your body look like? What would your home look like? Where would you live? What kind of car would you drive? What kind of vacations would you take? What kind of community service would you do? What kind of charities would you donate to? Think about those things. What does your life look like? Close your eyes and think about it. 
What does it look like? You can have that life. It doesn't have to be a daily struggle. You can have that life, but you have to put the work, the effort, and the trust in God behind it. You're not going to do it on your own. You don't do anything on your own. You may think that you do. You may, you know, be a martyr that you work 15 hours a day thinking you're the only one. Um, you may do all the hard things thinking you're the only one. Everyone does hard things every single day. I can promise you that building a business is the hardest thing I've ever done. I have struggled. I still struggle. Sometimes it's all I can do to stretch my paycheck to cover the bills I need to cover. Especially with the last year, of, I've been having to rebuild my business after all the, I've had three surgeries, hysterectomy. Um, but every day I wake up and I give my struggles to God and I push forward because he has a purpose for my life. And it's to help you understand that you can want all of the things, but you have to be willing to do the hard stuff. You have to be willing to not watch porn. You have to be willing to end your affair. You have to be willing to put down your fork and understand the only fulfillment in life truly comes from Jesus. And until you understand that he not only died on a cross for you, but he raised from the grave so that you could live sinless eternally in heaven, nothing that you try to fulfill your life with, not a relationship, not a job, will ever satisfy you. Nothing in my life ever satisfied me until I gave everything to Jesus. Now I get to sit here at this point in my life and ask him to fill my cup with the things that I need to do every single day to build the life that I want. And I'm willing to put in my side of the work because I know he's going to give me everything else that I don't have. He's going to give me the discipline. He's going to give me the want. He's going to give me the knowledge and the wisdom and the discernment and the prudence to follow through on the dreams that he's placed in my heart. Because I can't do it on my own. You can't do it on your own. Stop trying to do it on your own. I beg you to picture the life that you want. And then think about the work it's going to take to get there. Make a list. And don't stop fighting for that life that you want, the relationship that you want, the relationship with your kids, your friends, your coworkers. Find the purpose in your life. Find the thing that sets you on fire for Jesus and let him help you get there. You do hard things every single day. You can build the business you want. You can live in the body that you want. You can have the relationship that you want. You're strong and you're capable and you're worthy of all those things. Your past doesn't matter. Yesterday doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you have Jesus in your heart, you can do all of the things. You just have to learn to relinquish control Give it to him. Spend time with him every single day. I wake up first thing in the morning. I pray. I read personal development. I read something based on scripture. And I journal. I'm reading a book right now from, by uh, Grant Cardone called The Ten Times Rule. I wrote sticky notes and put them on my mirror and put them in my office. You are your problem. You are your solution. Take responsibility. Take massive action. Building your dream life requires massive action. Not Massive Netflix, not massive passivity, massive action and faith and belief that you can truly live any life that you want to in any body that you want to with whom you want to live it, doing the things that you want to do on your terms. As long as you keep Jesus at the forefront of every plan you make, you believe that mountain will be moved and he's going to move it going to be on his time and in his way but if you show up to do the hard things every day he is going to bless you my life doesn't look like the blessings I always had envisioned but I find joy and blessings every day in my struggle and I know that you can too stop trying to do it on your own all you got to do is look up he already knows the desires of your heart stop trying to do it on your own live the life you want find that fire and that passion and don't stop until you are proud. For God did not give her the spirit of fear, but the power of love and self-discipline. You can do it. You can do hard things. God bless.